Good morning, everyone. I'm Jian Cai from the Molecular Ecology Department of uh, Max Planck Institute for Chemical Ecology. Yeah, and today is my honor to give a presentation for the Scientist Explain seminar theory. And uh, I'm a postdoc in uh, worked on plant uh, herbivore interaction. And uh, today I will show you with some of my work about how plants kill insects without uh, poisoning themselves. Thinking about uh, insects, uh, thinking about plants, many people may uh, put the uh, image in the crop in the farm. And uh, the plant using, uh, it take the water from soil and uh, take the carbon dioxide uh, from the environment so using the sunshine to produce sugar or starch and finally off the you with the bread. But if you're a farmer, you will realize that it's not uh, as simple as that. You, you need to uh, take a lot of effort to uh, give the plant with fertilizer when the pests come, spread some insecticides. Uh, yeah, you take care of them carefully and then they could finally give some uh, good harvest. But uh, how about the wild uh, uh, plant? How no one uh, will support them, how they could survive, like in the desert. There is extremely limited water and no fertilizer and no one will spread insecticide when the herbivore comes. The answer is uh, simply is, uh, the plant are made in chemist. They produce uh, hundreds of thousands of different uh, special metabolites, all called secondary metabolites, because previously people think uh, they're not essential or not necessary for the plant to survive. So it's, but now I realize that it's not, that, oh, not always that the case. So we try to use the specialized metabolites. Uh, using this specialized metabolites, the plants can defense against uh, the herbivores, call for alliance with the natural enemy of the herbivores. Also attract the pollinator and communicate with the neighbor plants. They do everything using the chemical. They using the chemical solves all the problems that caused by the sensual property of plant. Uh, my research is um, focused about uh, plant uh, defense herbivores. So the plant defense, the chemical defense is mainly about uh, poisoning the uh, herbivore or mm, insect. Uh, based on the target of the toxin, we can separate, uh, divide the toxin to two parts. One is a specific target, another general target. A specific target means that the, the toxin is only toxic to some specific organism. And uh, like the nicotine, which is produced by the tobacco plant, they target the uh, nervous system. That's why the other insect or even human is, uh, could affect by the nicotine. But as the plant don't have the nervous system, so they don't care the nicotine. So the nicotine will never cause any problem to the plant, even in extremely high concentration. Another uh, class of uh, defense compound is a general target. Which, so following the name, it's uh, targeting the basic uh, life process. So it's uh, toxic to nearly all organisms. Then how plants solve the, this problem? How do plants avoid the toxic to themselves? The common way is called a binary system, which means that the plant accumulates an inactive toxin and uh, separate it with another a uh, part called, maybe called uh, detonators. They will only relax the toxic compounds when it needed, like the uh, master oil people usually used, uh, glucosinolates from the abdosis. They are uh, accumulated in a storage cell in an inactive form, and the detonator is an enzyme in a separate cell. When the herbivore eats the leaf, they mix these two parts and they will relax the toxic, show its defensive function. We call it a master oil bump. It's uh, uh, the same logic as the grenade people used. You don't want it exploited in your pocket. 
So that's a safety pin. When you pull it out, throw it away, then explode and keep you safety. It's exactly the same idea with this. And uh, my work is about uh, diterpenoid in wild tobacco plant. This is a wild tobacco called the Nicosiana and Niwata. It's a uh, native in the uh, desert in the, in the North America. It uh, produces a huge amount of uh, diterpenoid. It has a long scientific name. We simply call it the DTG. Uh, when the plant produces, when we using the uh, gene manipulation like the plant to produce less uh, DDG, the caterpillar will grow huge, much more bigger than on the wild type. This strongly indicated the defensive function of this metabolism, but we have no clear idea um, about the mechanism, which means uh, how this uh, DDG is toxic to the plant, what is target. And uh, for the metabolism uh, uh, produced by the plant, that you will have a biosynthetic pathway, which means using the simple uh, component in the cell uh, through a multiple uh, reaction catalyzed by, uh, by enzyme, and uh, finally go to the, uh, the functional product. The enzyme is controlled by a gene, and uh, uh, Currently, scientists can easily manipulate the gene and uh, then to redirect the biosynthesis the flow of biosynthesis. Call it. You can imagine like a, a metabolic flow. And we found that when the first the two stamp of this biosynthesis was uh, uh, knocked down, it's like, it's like blocked, the, will, the metabolism will be attenuate in the end or will be completely gone. But the plant is normal, yeah. Interesting is if you silence the UGT, we call the glucose transfers, and the plant will be crazy. They, they couldn't got any flower or any seeds. So what's the problem? The problem from this part is the mass from this part. But to clearly dissect this part, it's better to got the idea about uh, the function of this P450, we call the SIP. So uh, using different way, we figure out that the gene containing this stem is called uh, SIP736A, it's a little long name. And when this gene was uh, uh, knocked down, like the flow was blocked at here, and uh, the plant show autotoxic phenotype, which means that they have smaller plant, and they also couldn't got the flower at the early stage. And the leaf, when the leaf looks normal except a little bit smaller, but when the leaf was treated by methylgesmonid, it got some necrosis uh, phenotype. The methylgesmonid is a precursor of a, a plant fed hormone called uh, uh, jasmonic acid. It uh, could uh, induce, it's a, it's a conserved uh, fed hormone for all the plants. It could induce the uh, plant defense. Here also could uh, uh, induce a combination of the DDG in the plant. At the later developmental stage, when the plants finally got some flower could emerge from the inflorescence, they are abnormal, like the short stalk. Uh, no seeds could uh, set in from this plant. And uh, it's indicated that the DDG also got some problem right here at this stamp. But uh, it may be other, uh, other possible, uh, other possibility which is uh, the P450 have some uh, function control the primary control the plant development, and uh, to f to see whether this is uh, uh, caused by some other function of the P450, we uh, simultaneously uh, silence the the upstream generally narrow synthesis called GLS. If we silence this gene two gene together, you completely recover the phenotype, which show that. It's because of the D pathway rather than some unknown function of this P450. But uh, what is the exact uh, mechanism? To address this question, we did uh, the transcriptome analysis. Transcriptome analysis is, uh, is uh, some uh, uh, quantified uh, expression of every single gene in the organism. Uh, from the, uh, the discharge of different uh, uh, left stamp. Uh, we found that the sphingolipid biosynthesis 
bioscenic pathway was disturbed in the sip plant. Um, what is sip lipid? For the name, it's a, it's, a, it's a kind of lipid. You have the fatty acid chain, and another part is called the long chain base. Uh, the two parts uh, uh, combined together go to a long ampullar tail that could uh, punch into the cell membrane in within the bilayer phosphate lipid. They operate. Uh, they offer a polar height on the surface of the cell membrane. They uh, like an uh, anchor for many different life process. When we analyze the uh, biosynthetic uh, process, a biosynthetic pathway of the sphingolipid, we show that we found that the gene upstream the cellular synthesis. This is American cellular synthesis. Uh, the gene upstream the uh, cellular synthesis was uh, upregulated, and then the downstream is downregulated. It's just like a uh, uh, the water flow in a river. If you block it here, the upstream will accumulate and the, and, uh, the lower part will be decreased. So it strongly indicates that the problem happened at the thermal synthesis. Actually, some research have, uh, previous scientists have shown that uh, some plant uh, pathogen uh, using some uh, excrete, uh, some toxic target on the thermal synthesis in the plant cause the plant uh, necrosis, like this in the tomato plant. This phenotype is extremely similar with our SIP phenotype, the symptom. To see, uh, to test whether this is, uh, it really caused a better uh, cellular synthesis inhibition, we extract the mortality from different uh, plants and uh, did the enzyme C and show that the mortality from the SIP where it shows some abnormal phenotype, did inhibit the thermal synthesis activity. At the same time, when this uh, enzyme was inhibited, they accumulate a lot of uh, uh, substrate, a long chain base, in the uh, phenotype showing uh, tissues, like in the leaf and uh, uh, inflorescence. Previously, uh, scientists have found that uh, if you, if uh, we slightly downregulated the upstream SPT expression. The accumulated long chain base will be decreased, and the the phenotype, the toxic, will be elevated. Based on this, we co-silenced the SPT with the SIP, which did recover the flower phenotype. But the plant is a, is a little bit smaller. I think that makes sense because. If the, the sphingolipid is a necessary component for the life, if they are downregulated, the plant, the growth will be slower, will be affected. At the same time, the commonly the long term base in the seed plant also uh, go back to the normal condition, and the phenotype, both from the leaf and the flower, has been restored. And uh, further research shows that is some metabolism, some. Uh, uh, hydrolated metabolites uh, from the DD intermediate has uh, uh, inhibit the thermal synthesis activity and uh, cause the, the toxic to the plant. At the same time, we're thinking that uh, if the sphingolipid is uh, is the conserved uh, part for all the life, and uh, it may also is a mechanism that uh, the for the defensive function for well, like the uh, defense to the caterpillar. Based on this logic, we, we quantified the long chain base in the caterpillar uh, that feeding on the uh, wild type which produce DDG and the mutant plant that don't produce DDG. We showed that if the caterpillar f uh, eat a, a lot of DDG and they also accumulate a double amount of uh, long chain base, which indicated that the uh, thermal synthesis did the uh, target. But when we're using the DDG from the plant to do the in vitro bio C, we found that they couldn't inhibit the thermal synthesis activity from the caterpillar. At the same time, when we add, when we add this um, DDG metabolite from the plant to the uh, artificial diet, they didn't show any defensive function. The lava grows identical with the uh, control. 
so we are thinking that uh, maybe as we talked at the very beginning that uh, if the target is the general part, the plant uh, maybe uh, accumulate a uh, inactive form. So it only shows the through the toxic when the uh, compounds was uh, when the plant was damaged or when the compound was eaten by the uh, herbivores. So we using the metabolite from the uh, from the poop from the caterpillar poop. Uh, we did the in which enzyme C, which did inhibit the caterpillar cell metastasis. But what is the uh, exact metabolism in the in the poop? So we using the metabolomics analysis to figure out that uh, uh, hydrolytic product, the pattern is matched with the phenotype, which means if the caterpillar eat the DDT from the artificial diet, they couldn't uh, accumulate the hydrolytic DDT, and they also didn't show the different function. This is the structure of this metabolism. And uh, you see the, they have a, a different uh, hydroxyl position and uh, they did inhibit the caterpillar cell metastasis activity and uh, also affect the larva growth if, when this compound was added to the artificial diet. Yeah, so here is a model, it's uh, like uh, when uh, in the normal condition, the plant uh, using this biosynthetic pathway to produce a lot of uh, dietabin glucosate, or DDG. When the DDG was eaten by the caterpillar, uh, some modification, uh, here is the hydrogenation, will happen to this metabolism, and the products will inhibit the caterpillar cell metastasis, cause the defense function. But when the balance, uh, pathway was blocked at some position, and the cumulate intermediate will also got some modification in the plant and the products will inhibit the cell metastasis in the plant itself, cause the autotoxicity. Yeah. So from here, we, we can uh, see that actually the defense function of the metabolic or its autotoxicity mechanism is, is the same, they share the mechanism. And uh, so it's uh, like uh, the model is uh, the plant will accumulate the inactive form when the caterpillar come to eat it, and uh, the metabolite uh, switch uh, transferred to the caterpillar and then was uh, detonated or changed to the active form. From this uh, story, you can see that how the smart plants are. They are super smart, even like the human design the bump. Yeah. Uh, that's all. Thank you. This is today, my presentation for today. Any question? Yeah, we have one question. Do plants also hurt themselves exactly at the site where the mustard bond was triggered? Because I, I guess the question is about, because exactly at this site, the two compounds, the macro poison, could also meet, right? Not only the uh, Yeah. Uh, in some cases, like uh, we showed at the very beginning the, for the glucosinolase or the mustard oil, that happens in the uh, in the plant, when the leaf was damaged, the, the toxin will relax directly in the, at the leaf position. Uh, but uh, I'm not uh, really sh uh, completely sure about whether the plant will show the uh, toxic at the damaged part because uh, when the caterpillar eat the leaf, they will eat it and nothing left. So you couldn't exactly clearly see whether they show the toxic effect or not. Mm. In our case, uh, in this uh, uh, tobacco plant case, the, uh, the toxic only show when the, uh, when the chemical was eaten by the caterpillar. But for the exact mechanism, how that happens, uh, uh, we are not uh, clear yet. It's not clear yet. Okay, then thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye.